Good evening, everyone. Welcome um, to a presentation by Brazilian architect Gustavo Trabo from Gustavo Trabo Studio. Um, it's quite a pleasure to have you, Gustavo. Welcome to the Faculty of Architecture, University of uh, Manitoba. Um, Gustavo and I met um, in Sao Paulo last year, feels like 10 years ago. <laughs> but just last year, we were working together in a um, studio that I was delivering in Sao Paulo. It was a studio based on a uh, Iqaluit Nunavut project in collaboration with uh, Lola Shepard and Mason White at Escola da Cidade. And uh, we, have, we had invited Gustavo to attend the studio as a critic with uh, which, you know, he came for our pleasure. So we spent a lovely day in Sao Paulo. After the crits, we um, went to an uh, architect colleague from uh, Escola da Cidade, Anderson Freitas. And we, we had a wonderful time. It was a birthday party with barbecue. It was a Brazilian party. It was really sympathetic. And then after that, after the party at the end of the afternoon, we had a chance to visit, or Gustavo invited me to visit his studio, which actually is, is housed inside of a cathedral in Sao Paulo. Uh, it's a very uh, unusual situation, but maybe not so unusual for Sao Paulo. And uh, it was lovely to see the work, um, you know, in a very tangential way. Um, we also find out uh, more recently, we, we exhibited together in the Brazilian pavilion of the 16th International Architecture Exhibition at the Venice Biennale a couple of years ago. And more recently, um, Sean Bailey and I and Gustavo, we were planning to work on a project together here um, in Ontario. Um, it was to be a design built um, project for the Show Lake 40 community when the pandemic hit us back in March and the project was canceled. So <clears throat> it's happy, we are ha happy to have Gustavo here uh, with us tonight. Thank you, Gustavo, for accepting our invitation. And um, Gustavo earned his degree in architecture and urbanism from the Universidade Federal do Paraná um, in Curitiba. And then since then he has been lecturing and teaching and uh, doing all kinds of different activities, workshops at uh, Harvard, at uh, IIT in Chicago, University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, Riba in London, among other schools. Um, Gustavo has been a visiting professor at the University of Hong Kong, and he has been an assistant, he is an assistant professor at the Escola da Cidade in Sao Paulo, um, where we met. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Gustavo received the, the Royal Institute of British Architects International Prize, RIBA, along with RIBA International Emerging Architect Prize. Uh, which is obviously very representative and significant for him. Um, at Gustavo Tra Trabo Studio, they, they have a position that's a little bit shifted from the conventional practice of architecture. They strive in expanding the architecture field, um, especially using research as a uh, kind of foundation for each project. Um, Gustavo Trabo Studio also preserves very significantly a very collaborative uh, way of practicing. And I would uh, highlight here his incredible collaboration with Elio Olga. Elio is a legendary uh, wood structure engineer in Brazil. Um, where they both have been collaborating in projects and in research related both to native wood structures in Brazil 
but as well communities, especially communities in the north of the country, in proximity with Amazon forest. Um, his intention is always to seek for a sustainable and inclusive approach in his architecture and deal with materiality in a historical context. It's also very important for Gustavo to use his architecture to connect people in social embracing spaces. And I particularly uh, appreciate the absolutely sheer elegance of his work and really incredible and absolute technical precision of his structures. So I'd like to welcome um, Gustavo. Gustavo, thank you again. And the word is yours. Thank you, Eduardo, for your uh, kind and generous introduction. Uh, uh, thank you, Jay, for, for the invitation too. For me, it's a pleasure. As you told before, it's a pity that our project didn't, didn't uh, move forward, Eduardo, but I'm sure uh, it will happen someday somehow. And I'm super, super happy to be here today uh, with all of you guys sharing some uh, I was trying to share here some doubts and some other elements that are, that quite they are quite important for me nowadays uh, and some and I put together this presentation uh, in a way that I, I I think could be interesting for you related to the notion of nature right because when we we work together me and Eduardo into the Escola da Cidade for me it was uh, super interesting to understand how uh, how the landscape in in this specific part of Canada that I don't remember the name Eduardo sorry in Kaluit, Kaluit in Nunavut exactly uh, works and I, I was uh, and I was thinking that um, I cannot read the place uh, because it's so different that I don't have the skills to read it. So, and for me, everything starts from the place and 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 from the people too. So, one thing that strikes me every time is our um, our difficulty to understand and conceptualize nature right because everyone can can conceptualize uh, culture but the way we understand nature is different from each one right so and i and i quite i, I like this this we, we call here brasiliana images that is the images uh right uh in the beginning of the colonization uh because because they, they try to show uh, total out of proportion the nature. Uh, but in, the, in what strikes me in these images is that the, the native is showing uh, the way to another one, right? Because, and for, for me, why this is important is because we nowadays don't have the skills uh, to read nature in a proper way, right? We, after being, and an, an in my context, this is quite important, as we do have a, a strong modern uh, architecture school and, 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 and masters, but uh, when we think uh, this modern architecture, they usually are trying to design objects that are in front of a landscape, right? So the landscape is more like a background of the of the architecture rather than uh, a, a strong conversation. So for me, try to understand the nature is uh, and the persistence of the place is something uh, super in interesting and important in my work. And every time that you try to do it, you learn a lot. And and one of my trips that I that I did, one of the projects that I will share with you later, uh, sorry, I went to 
to Amazon, right? To, to the middle of Amazon uh, rainforest. And from Sao Paulo to this place took me 52 hours, right? Uh, so, but it's not walking, right? It's plane, boat, uh, well, quite, quite tricky to arrive here. And then when I arrived to this place, we went to this place because I asked the local people to camp into a place that, that was kind of uh, uh, free of any human traces, right? So it was in the middle of the rainforest, uh, the Amazon rainforest. And when you arrive there, it's like, it's incredible, it's beautiful. But uh, what, what strikes me when I was there was this, uh, uh, this trash uh, that when the river comes down, the trash stops into, into the nature. And, and, and for me, it becomes nature, right? Uh, we cannot uh, think nowadays that anything that we do don't have an impact in, 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 into the world, right? Because, uh, and now we are, we are living uh, this pandemic and we do understood that all actions have a consequence, right? A consequence, sorry. So I spent, I, I stood there two days taking a lot of photos and a lot of photos in the end of this trash and the way that this trash is uh, connected with nature, right? And for me, again, this is super important because as we live in, the, in this uh, moment that the scientists are calling uh, Anthropocene, right? Uh, where everything is connected, uh, the notion of nature should be expanded for me. Right? So, uh, and be, because I do understand that we change matter and we can conform once more nature. This is conceptually not not that I can do it <laughs> so much, but uh, but I, I do try it. So the the only the only element that I can trace uh, where it came from was this can, and it traveled uh, from the south part of the of Brazil to there. I don't know how, so I just uh, keep that with me so this relation of nature and try to understand different contexts and 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 for sure the culture too uh, it's it's an important part of my of my process and and it was important into this project that was the children villa village of Canoana. Canoana is in the center of brazil uh, and and from sao paulo to there it took me 12 hours of uh, traveling, right? Uh, I, I, I will, during like our, our talk, uh, I will keep saying how, lo how long it takes me from Sao Paulo to the other parts of the country just to uh, make you uh, understand this, con this context a little bit more because this distance and this infrastructure uh, elements inform a lot uh, my architecture. So uh, this project is a boarding school for uh, uh, how can I say the proper word is not poor, but uh, they don't have the means to 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 pay for school, or in this context, they actually don't have any public school. Uh, so this. This is why this, uh, this, this foundation that called Bradesco Foundation, this is a bank foundation, did this boarding school into this place uh, in the middle uh, of, of Brazil. So when they invite me to do this, uh, to do this project, uh, when, when I went uh, to, to the place was, uh, was amazing because you should imagine that we tra travel 12 hours. Then when I arrive there, it, it is a small city uh, with 840 kids playing all around. So it's kind of a city of kids, right? So it's quite a, 
I don't know, for me, it was shocking and, and be, to see their freedom just to walk away. And, and, and again, you should understand that I live in Sao Paulo and the violence over here is quite uh, high, right? So looking around the nature is super, uh, super beautiful. But to design uh, uh, a body school to these kids was important to understand not just like the, con the context, but the way that their parents or grandf uh, grandparents live, right? And for me, th this, uh, this image is, is, is super important that is from an indigenous community uh, right across the river of the farm. Uh, and when you, when you go there, they're uh, super, super poor. And, 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 but, but the relation to knowledge or the relation to uh, information that arrived to them is just from TV, right? And they can only uh, tune one channel, right? That call we call here global. That's quite a, a big uh, uh, television uh, channel, right? And when they tune into this channel, everything that they see into television as the image of progress or success is something totally different from this, right? Uh, so usually it's a, a concrete structure with uh, concrete blocks and everything. Um, and the same happened uh, to, to other types of, of uh, buildings that they, they, they have around. And, and what happened, for example, in this, when, we, when I went to visit this house, uh, and when you enter inside this house, it's, uh, it's super cool inside of it, right? Because Brazil is extremely hot. In this place, they say that they have two seasons. The first one is summer. The second, the second one is hell, right? So it's hot, it's super, super, super hot, right? So what happened that they, when they have the means, they, they buy concrete blocks and they build their own houses with concrete blocks. But as they usually do, the windows are quite small and, and the house get super hot inside of it and it's almost impossible to stay inside of it without our air conditioning. But you should understand that to, for these people, they don't have the means to, to pay the, the electrical bill. So change the architecture uh, or to, uh, to fulfill this image of progress have a lot of, uh, uh, of problems in the end. So we try to understand this context we developed a lot of uh, uh, play situations with the kids, uh, not just to understand what they need, for example, share a room with uh, five colleagues, but to increase the sense of belonging of the project, uh, because they enter into the school with, se with seven years and they leave with 18. And, uh, so they, they, they spend a lot of time into this body school and the notion of home uh, for us was important to, to be increased. So this is the, 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 old, uh, the old buildings. And, and one typology that, that I do get a lot of interest is what we call varanda that is kind of porch, a space in between inside and outside that have a lot of different uh, uh, functions. And it's not like a, it's, you don't have a, a proper function, right? You can raise your kid, you can uh, take care of the chicken, you can hang your clothes. And this in between space helps cooling uh, the, the, the inside of the house. And, and, and it was something, uh, and it's something super important for, for us here in Brazil as we are in a tropical like, condition. And I don't know if you know Francis Alice, this, um, he's an artist that 
mainly live in Cidade do México. And this, this is a frame of a movie, a 12 hours movie that he shot into Zakalu Square. And what, what's interesting about this movie is that the flag pole is a sun watch, right? So the sun is moving and the shadow and the shade is moving and the people are moving with it. So create the shadow and create the shade. It's an, an essence part to, uh, to occupy the territory and, and create the landscape, right? So um, usually in the project, I started with a lot of photos that I, I'm taking of the, of the place. Then later I started to do a lot of drawings some of them are oil on, on paper, uh, quite, it's not precise at all. It's much more to, uh, for me to understand uh, what, what I'm doing or, or what are the, the, the essence of the project. Uh, and, and this project, so here you can see the whole, uh, the whole school, right? So these are the pedagogical part of the school. The school is houses of the professors and uh, the canteen and everything. So it's quite, the, the farm is much bigger than this, uh, but, the, the, uh, but the school mainly is this. And then the old buildings were here, they were here, then we demolish it and build uh, these two new uh, dormitories here. And, and why, we, why we did that uh, and, and locate like these ways just two factors, right? The first one is to increase the distance between the school and the dormitory. So they need to walk a little bit and by walking, they start to understand uh, that they are leaving home to, to arrive into the school. And the, the other one is to uh, make possible uh, the construction process because imagine we have uh, teenagers here and, and, and that could not stop studying and, and, to, const and to construct these two buildings we do need uh, to, to establish kind of a safe zone in the middle and everyone that's coming from outside walk into these two uh, buildings, right? Uh, in the beginning of the project I thought it was never be built because I don't know, like build something uh, like this in the middle, almost as you can see in the middle of nowhere, almost. Uh, so I, I got super, uh, super happy about it. And again, as I was showing the Francis Eilis image, and one thing that uh, was super clear for us, and, and, and we tried to convince the client as much as possible, is that the importance of generate uh, a general space, a uh, general shadow element. Because in the end, the building is, the building is quite simple. It's a, 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 a repetition of a module that is 5.9 meters by 5.9 meters. I'm sure you don't use the meter uh, uh, element, so I don't know how, how much feet it, it we is. Use, we use both, Gustavo. We use both. All right, all right. So, so everything is into this uh, dimension, 5.9 meters by 5.9 meters, right? Uh, and why we did that? For two reasons. We need to prefabricate everything, right? Or we try to prefabricate everything that was light and need precision into the construction uh, site. So, uh, and the size of the back of the truck in Brazil is 12 meters. So if we have 5.9 meters by plus 5.9 meters, we could, could fit a lot of elements on the back of the truck. And with that, we, uh, we decrease our pollution and, and we create, increase our uh, capacity per truck to, to, to move the pieces into, into the side. Uh, as the plan is almost uh, everything a repetition, 
So this is just one room that is re uh, repeating all, all over. So these three, uh, three elements look to this patio, and this tree to this patio, and so on and so forth. Uh, the patio, uh, you see later the plane of, of the dormitory is quite small. And again, the, 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 the common space was the most important space of the building. And the patio have uh, this potential to, uh, to, uh, to be a meeting, uh, a, a meeting uh, space, but to create a microclimate to decrease the temperature of the building. So the dormitory is quite small, six kids per, per room and, uh, and lavatories and everything. So different typologies and how it's getting, uh, and, and this relation uh, between dormitories and, and, and outside. And how is this, uh, the patios? The difference between the, the, the male dormitory and the female dormitory uh, mainly is the landscape, the, the landscape, so that we change different species. Uh, one thing that I should uh, mention for you guys is that we try to 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 do this building as as pedagogical as possible, right? I was showing the images of the, the, the father's house and the parents' houses, right? So they build their own houses. And we thought was it, that would be important to build as straightforward as possible this building, because in this way, maybe naively, uh, they can learn from this building and try to uh, increase their knowledge in their own houses, in, the, in the, their knowledge in the, into construction in their own houses. Uh, further into the, into the talk, I will share another project that we took it, uh, this uh, pedagogical uh, uh, element in the project as the main thing. But this idea starts here. Uh, and, and to do that, for example, and, and, as, and as we don't have uh, a lot of, our budget was restrict, we, and we want to consume as less material as possible. For example, this column, uh, all columns are 15 by 15 centimeters. And who designed uh, with us, as, as Eduardo said, uh, in the beginning, uh, the structure was Eluoga, the mainly almost just not one project I did that I will show you a few guys to you guys today. I did indeed with him. Uh, so all the columns is 15 by 15 centimeters. When we need to increase the stiffness of the column, we just add another part, for example, here. So the, col the, the normal color column is 15 by 15, when we need more uh, uh, stiffness in the column, we just add four parts and make uh, visible joints, right? Uh, and with that, we, we, we uh, decrease our wood consumption. So inside the dormitories, And, and again, everything is straightforward. For example, you see this beam, it's here because we have the balcony. And sometimes, sorry. We move to other direction. All right, no worries. Sorry, guys. Uh, so, and sometimes when the, the balconies uh, reach the column, uh, they help uh, the stiffness of the, of the, of the building. Uh, the walls, they're all made from uh, uh, local uh, mud, and we press every, uh, the, the, the mud into bricks and just uh, rest into the sand. But to, to, 
to develop this kind of detail in the project, uh, we need to uh, use the walls in a way that uh, help us uh, to the stiffness of the building because actually this, you can see this building as a kite, right? It's just like one uh, big element that in the end as it's so light that wanted to fly. So we use the bricks to bring them down and not to increase the foundations. And to the upper floor, we have common areas, TV rooms, study rooms, and a lot of free spaces. And, and in the, during the process of the project, the director of the school said to me that he will have a lot of problems because it's a lot of space that he don't know how to, 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 to use it. And we, we did a lot of, we had a lot of discussion and, and in, in, in the end, he understood that this problem to not, to, to don't know how to occupy uh, the building, this free space could be a huge potential, a potential to, to, to him and for, for the students uh, because they need to imagine how to use the building. So for example, the last time that I came back to the building it was two years ago. Uh, in the top floor, they are doing kind of a, a hip hop battle. We have, we have like funk music here, it's kind of hip hop, totally different, but they are doing kind of music battle. So it was quite interesting that they brought music to their own lives into a more public space rather than just like listen to the, the, the headphones. And it, when I went to the uh, girls dormitory, uh, they were doing yoga, right? So, and you should imagine the importance of it because doing yoga in a place as remote as Kanoana is kind of imaginable in the beginning, but what happened that they have the, the space, they need to invent ways of using, using it. So the, the girls went to, went to internet, YouTube, whatever, and see um, physical practice that they want to, to, to do. So just moving away, this is the, the study room so <clears throat> and we use like these wood elements that uh and and with the geometry and with the curves feels that you are uh enclosed uh that that you are alone but the the professors and the the, the teachers can uh, walk around and see everything that is happening inside of you elements of play and section but you know so mainly the building is this one uh way down roof well i was talking yesterday with eduardo and uh, that and he asked me what well what what is the the how you say the what was difficult for you into the project, right? What, what happened uh, beyond the, the beautiful image in the end? So when I got this project, I, come to the, I went to the client and, and after he said, oh, okay, to the project, and we, we started moving to the, the, the construction drawings. I went to the client and said, like, I, I never built something like that before. So I'm totally sure that I will do a lot of mistakes, all right? Because I don't know exactly how to do it. Uh, but if I do these mistakes close to home, it will be much cheaper than do these mistakes in the middle of nowhere. So we convince the client, then convince uh, the, the contractor and, and everyone to do a prototype close to Sao Paulo. And this kind of uh, thing is not normal here in Brazil to do a prototype of the building to understand exactly how 
it's working. So for, for me, it was incredible because I could test a lot of different things, different different joints, and during the construction side, we keep looking to these prototypes, right? And making the detail as refined and simple and straightforward as possible. So the, the, the constructions, what we designed this, this project was design the construction site too, right? Because as everything is so far away and super hot, right? So we designed this light structure that came prefabricated and we just assemble it, uh, cut into CNC and super uh, into a huge precision. So we uh, build the structure, we cover it, then everyone works into the shadow. And with that, we increase the productivity of, uh, of, the, of the construction site and, and decrease our cost because build something in a place so remote as this one, uh, the time into the construction site is super expensive. So when we decrease the time, we uh, save a lot of money. And again, uh, so as I said before, everything that was light was prefabricated, uh, prefabricated and, uh, and brought to the construction site and everything that was heavy and need the, the uh, and will help us into, in terms of uh, thermal insulation uh, was, do, was done um, locally. So we did, we, we, we designed this, this small construction, uh, uh, this, this fabric, this in, small brick industry in the back of the construction site. And we produce 4,000 bricks per day. Uh, so they're heavy bricks, right? And with that, we uh, increase our uh, thermal insulation. And the first thing that the, the, the director asked to the to the uh, to the foundation, like the, the the main part of the foundation here in São Paulo, was blankets, a uh, blanket to the to the students because as we decrease. Uh, so much the temperature inside of the the, the the dormitories they weren't used with that temperature so they need to cover themselves and then the, and in the beginning they want air conditioning and everything so we don't have even we don't have glass into the, the construction so this with just with the rotation of the brick we create a a veil that helps cooling without losing privacy So in the end, the project works super well. The, 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 uh, we increase the number of, of students that pass uh, into the final exams and enter into the university. So they asked us to, to design another, uh, another project that was a refurbishment into a different uh, place that is Pantanal that's close to Bolivia. It's a huge plateau uh, in Brazil that in, during the rain season it gets uh, kind of you can see almost like all all what a kind of huge lake on the top of 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 the of the vegetation uh, and and design something in a place like this as the previous project it's again how can you imagine uh, measure uh, uh, nature right and this piece of Carl Andre for me is super interesting because using the same element he uh, make visible the topography and the distance between these two points so usually I'm trying to develop a system of measures that helps me uh, uh, constructing into a into a good way, right? So this was the the existing uh, buildings and and to sorry and to uh, so these are the existing buildings uh, and what we did in the end was 
connect them and create these patios, small three small patios and two bigger patios, all connected. Into, so it was designed actually one building rather than small buildings into the landscape. And we connect all these buildings with, with, with platforms that it's elevated from the ground because during the rain season, have water all over the place so the kids don't need to uh, step into the water anymore and it's covered. And again, in the beginning, a lot of naive models to understand proportion. Uh, and we departed from the existing windows. So the measurements between windows is the measurements, is, is the measure that expand to the whole building and connect everything. Again, in this context, we, we do have a, a, a concrete plan, concrete plan close to the, not so close, but close to the site. So we did everything prefabricated in concrete and steel, uh, the foundations and everything. And it was much more an um, assembling process uh, rather than a construction process. So the images from the beginning of the project and uh, this new roof and everything that we have just one uh, uh, one way down and with as as the project it's super horizontal uh, we play a lot with the the inclination of the roof with that we uh, we establish sometimes. Uh, kind of one building, you understand the building as one building and sometimes with different parts. This is, this is not final photos of the project, just photos that I took. When I wasn't finished yet, now it's finished. So I'm just moving forward. Now, this is the project that I mentioned before that we are doing to the uh, Amazon rainforest. Uh, where I took that photo in the beginning, and when, one thing that is super interesting into the Amazon rainforest is the, first the size of the rivers and the relation that the, a lot of communities have with the water, right? And how they and how they develop uh, construction methods related to the water, and how uh, the water is not just uh, the resource of uh, of the life, but it's a, it's, a, it's a playground and everything. And again, the situation of, of the intense sun. And, and this community, what, what it's super interesting, they, what they do in the end, they produce uh, oil from a nut that we, for sure you know as Brazilian nut. So they produce this oil and they sell to a cosmetic uh, industry called Natura. And Natura used this oil to skincare uh, products. And they start selling this oil in maybe 20 to 25 years ago. And a small part of the profit of the products go, what go, used to go to a, a, a uh, a found, uh, I think I can say something like that, to a, a, to a, a bank where they, they, they leave this money. And after 20 years, uh, Natura said, all right, we need to train them or share some knowledge with them. As now they have a lot of money, they can uh, manage it by themselves and 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 the changes in their life as they need using this money. So, uh, because they work, uh, it's super interesting. They spend four months inside of the Amazon forest. They collect this nut, then later they open this nut and, and, and they travel through the rivers. Uh, and bring this net into the industry. So this, these are the community. Uh, what happened that they construct a hydroelectrical power plant here, 
and the community used to live all the way here. And by doing that, they increase uh, the river, right? Because they need to uh, conform a lake here. And from almost from one day to another, they force everyone to come and live here. So kind of uh, a strange situation, living to uh, kind of a small city in the middle of nowhere. So they develop a lot of uh, difficulties because they don't know exactly how they should behave with neighborhoods and, 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 and everything. Uh, well, so they, uh, Natura called me and said, well, we, we have this opportunity. I think it's important to someone like you to come here to the community, try to understand what they want in the end as this, uh, as this new industry to produce more um, oil and to produce uh, crackers using the, 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 the rest of, of, of the, the extracting process. Um, so they invite me. I went. I went there. Spent uh, one week there. And one thing that I understood that was super clear is that they spent four months into the the forest, then four months producing the oil. Then the other four months of the year, they don't have anything to do because they don't have jobs and they cannot uh, apply to a different job because the government don't allow them to do that. So we do, ha we do have this opportunity to, to uh, design something that will, uh, uh, that will allow them to know a different skill so they can uh, do something during these four months that they are not uh, producing oil. So in this research, we try to merge vernacular architecture and really light structures. Again, naive drawings, um, the new industry into the context. Uh, so it's a huge roof with these uh, small elements beneath it. Uh, and this, uh, each of these small elements are part of different parts of the fabric of the industry. And uh, why we did that is because all all these different rooms have different technique different techniques of assembling brick uh, and with that we think that we can we can increase their knowledge in how to build it it's all doing locally and for the structure we use uh, local wood and again Elio always helping us with the, the uh, with the design and we use uh, the local knowledge of doing boats. Uh, so they know how to do really good boats. It's super simple, but they are really good boats. Uh, and we are bringing this knowledge to, to this structure that this structure is, uh, again, is just using uh, uh, local wood and local material that we do have there. So this was the first, uh, and the first, uh, the first time that I showed the project to the community, and so they need to vote and everything. We have uh, this op really open process uh, with them. And sorry, I, I don't think you're listening to the audio, but and but now she's saying we need to know everything. Uh, we need to know everything that will happen in each of these boxes. And it's, it's interesting how all the women of the community came and the men stay in the back. So it's, it's, it seems like a, a not important fact, but as we build this industry here, it's, they need it, right? But in some way is an excuse to do other things, right? Is to think architecture into a more holistic pro process, is how this community can get together, and so on and so forth. 
And now we, we just start the construction, the construction process. There. So just moving forward, I don't have too much time. So just to show a different project, I have two more projects that will show really briefly. This is in Sao Paulo, uh, the two main rivers, uh, uh, Pinheiros River and Tietê. So and this uh, used to be an industrial area that we call Vila Leopoldina, uh, and they and they won a competition to design a building into this specific site. Uh, taking a little close look to the site, sorry, it's this site here, over here. And to the competition, I, I, it, it's an international, uh, multinational uh, advertising company that they want to uh, Unify the two, 32 agencies agencies that they have here in Sao Paulo into one building. They have 4,200 collaborators, so they want to bring all of them in one building. Uh, sorry. Uh, and during the and during the competition process, I was uh, trying to understand actually what what is what's what is to build something in Sao Paulo and how can I bring nature and culture uh, and, and create a new nature here. So again, a lot of uh, photographs uh, and a lot of uh, naive models and, and to try to understand what is the project. And a little bigger models and that we we develop it to the competition process. Uh, so, what, what for me? What, another thing that's super interesting is to try to understand banalities, right? What is like the traces of the human culture that no one is looking too much, and how can we perceive it? into a different way and try to rearrange it to, to, to build something different. And when I was doing the, this competition, during one phone call with uh, one of the, the, the organizers of the, the competitions, he, he said to me, oh, just for the, for the, the competition brief wasn't clear to the parking lot. So I call him and say like, do you have more information about the, 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 the parking lot? So what, how many places do you need and everything? Then he said like, oh, don't worry about the, the, the parking lot, just do a prefabricated or any structure uh, and put the number of cars there and you design a different building and from your project and you put as many cars as needed into this other building. So I said, all right, and, uh, and for me, th this was an important information, right? So I try to understand how parking lots are viewed and how can I use pre-cast uh, uh, concrete structure that usually are viewed to, to do. They usually use this structure to build uh, parking lots. I usually work with my friend, Felipe Russo, who is a photographer, so he, he took a lot of uh, he has an a incredible uh, amount of images that we pass through it uh, from time to time and we discuss about nature and, and, and a, lot of, a lot of things. Uh, so mainly the building is a concrete uh, precast structure uh, into this developing area. And again, for everything in the project that for me uh, was was important to 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 come together into this kind of this is a Jasp it's a place where you go to buy uh, mainly natural elements and it's really close to this place so I was trying to understand how these prefabricated elements and nature can come together into small details in the beginning and how they can conform a, a, a new element. So, so 
So it was a, a series of images. This is the, the this is the construction site. Sorry, it's much bigger. So the the building in the end have uh, seventy thousand square meters. Uh, the plan, I just moving forward. So the, the ground floor, we try to do as we try to do as open as possible. Um, again, like all this precast concrete structure and uh, round glasses uh, that help uh, with the distortion of the perspective. So it was important for me to change the, the notion of the perspective with this uh, reflection of the glasses and and and, and the, the pavement is, is green concrete and then they start to uh, come together with nature and and this uh, this skin is more uh, kind of roundish element the main court, courtyard so I've, where everyone can can meet everyone when you're going up, uh, for example, this floor plan have 11,000 square meters, so it's quite huge. And a lot of, uh, we have three different cores and these cores are connected to, uh, with verandas, the office, and moving up the plants start to get in smaller and smaller and we have all these uh, verandas all in, in, to the whole building they are all connected uh, with stairs and we think we, we will develop further how it can work a little bit more uh, So moving up and the cross section is quite big. So the last project I think I do have five to ten minutes. Uh, it's a I do have right or there? Yeah, no problem. All right. So it's a don't have a actually don't have a function a, a, a priori. But uh, we were, we, I was called to design a building into uh, the indigenous park of Xingu. This is the main park in the central area of Brazil for uh, a community that called Kiseji. And, and why they call me? First of all, is that this indigenous park is in the middle uh, of a lot of uh, soil plantation and here I, I don't know if you pass by a soil plantation I don't know exactly how it works in Canada but here and this one specifically you can drive 100 and 120 kilometers in the middle of the soil plantation and you just drive and just see soil soil soil, soil all, all around and what happens to maintain this production, we need to uh, use a lot of chemicals, right? And as I, I mentioned before, as everything is connected, now we, we actually understood that. Uh, in this place, what happens when the wind blows, all these uh, chemicals go inside to the Dino's Park. And this specific community, they start to get sick and, and they need to abandon the old village and build a new one and for, for and for that we uh with uh, uh, uh an institute here that called isa we ha we ha we have the access to um norwegian found that that send us a really small amount of money to to do the project and for me what was interesting to this project was to uh, stay a little bit longer with them 
and, and try to understand uh, their behavior and, and, and how they build their OCA, that is the, the, the Brazilian name of their houses, we call it OCA. And they are super, uh, for me, they are super beautiful and, and, and precise. Uh, one man can build uh, an oka in two, in three to four months by himself. So sometimes they need he need help, but most of most of it um, he build, they can build by themselves. So uh, this gentleman was showing me uh, uh, really. Uh, how can I say? He said to me, "Take a photo of me with this with this wood element, so you can register that I can cut it as flat as possible." So he was really proud of it, you know, the, how they can do it without any uh, significant tool. So, and one and another thing that's for me super interesting into the orca is that in this specific type of orca, because I have different different types, is that is how they uh, use inside of it and how they how they do the partition inside of an orca, and they don't have any partition. The only partition that they have is the light and the shadow, right? In the middle of the octa is where you saw the, two, the, <clears throat> the, the window and door, they are symmetrical. So the light enters into, into, into this part and in the middle of the octa is, the, is the, the, the brightness part of the octa. So they develop all the, the uh, public uh, program of, of their lives into the middle of it. So they eat, they talk uh, in the middle of Oka and into the, in more into the, the, the corner they sleep. And one thing that you just can understand, I don't have the ability to take a photo and, 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 and show this, but this shadow and has uh, a depth that is super interesting and you cannot understand exactly that you are changing uh, to a different place but but you are and when you stay in for uh, uh, a few days inside of it you can understand it a bit more so they they ask us to to do this uh, kind of uh, it's a community center, but it's not a community center because this is the community center of them. This is a kind of uh, complementary building to receive white people and, and, and to discuss different matters or even to do more kind of, uh, 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 sorry, uh, to do, um, celebrations that is not connected to their culture. So to design something here, I, I just had 15 days to, to design the project. And in saying that I'm not, I'm not saying it's not well designed because I don't have the time, but, uh, but it was super, super fast. And I do have, by that time, I thought that I have two different approaches. The first one is try to uh, maintain proportion and design something with a different language because I don't belong to their culture and by contradiction, I can reinforce their culture rather than uh, try to compete. Or the second, the second strategy should, uh, could be uh, try to uh, reassemble the same elements as they have over there. But in the end, I thought the, the first uh, strategy was better uh, because I want them to think that this building is not uh, as good as what they do. So, and actually it happened. 
so I thought as with eight different pieces, I can assemble uh, into uh, different ways and build this project. Um, and when we, during these 15 days, we, we uh, after we came back, uh, we did the model, we designed everything. So I had all the construction drawings and everything and, and the model. So I went back to the, to the site. And again, for, I arrived there, it's 42 hours, it's super far, but they don't have, they don't have electricity, right? Uh, so, and so everything that you need to build here should, you should bring from outside. Uh, to, to this context or use the elements that they have there. Uh, so when I arrived there, I was with a model uh, and with all the construction drawings. And he, he, he is Paulo. He's the one in charge of the construction of the building. And it was his, his first time to, to build something for, for an architect. So he don't know, he didn't know exactly how to read planes and sections and everything. So all the construction drawings don't make too many, <laughs> too much sense in this context. So we spent, I spent with him five days just looking to the models, to the model and doing prototypes, small elements and, and sketches together so he can understand the, the, the building and how to build it. And, and, and what was interesting that I came back four months later and rebuilt it so, um, into a super uh, nice way. Uh, the community, actually, in the, I designed the structure and, and, and the walls. The communities can say like, I want a window here, I want to open, get, getting a little bit down. So I did a lot of different uh, possibilities and, and the community can decide whatever they want during the construction. Uh, so again, the, the relation of proportion for me was important. Uh, and the openings, how uh, simple it could, could be and create different atmospheres inside of it. So the main part of the building, they call it auditorium kind of auditorium nowadays. A small kitchen. So the plan is super simple, just moving forward to show a video. So all the steel elements and joints I produce into the city closed to the, to the, the closest city uh, to the place. So when I went there to uh, share this, the project with them, I, br I brought all the steel elements with me. So everything uh, is put together with screws. So if they want to uh, change to a different location, if something happened, they can uh, reassemble the structure. Uh, yeah. So detailing. I will just stop share here and share a different, uh, so you can just see. So when I, when I was there, the first time when I showed the project to Kasiki, that is the, the main, uh, the most important uh, person into the village, I showed the project, then he was saying that he wants that the building should be all white. And because he wanna paint uh, the white walls with 
decorative uh, drawings that they used to do in, into the body. Then I said, Kasiki, please, I think we, we should reconsider. We, we need to do it like as raw material as possible because they will uh, age well and you keep using uh, the, the, the paintings in your body. And he looked at me and said, white architect sit and design whatever Kasik wants. So it was kind of <laughs> intense process. In the end, uh, less, the next day, he invited me to eat a crocodile with him. And he said like, all right, let's, let's just, just leave as well as you said, and it will be better. What happens in the building, Gustavo? Oui? What happens in the building? Whatever they want, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. I, I hope I make myself clear. No, it was, very clear. It was super clear. Thank you. Um, I think we have a little bit of time for a quick conversation as a segue to the work. Thank you for the work, really beautiful. Uh, one thing that becomes clear and that's very consistent in your projects is this kind of uh, counterpoint you create in relationship to nature that um, often we don't see architects doing. I think, uh, of course, the environmental crisis we are facing now is just a reflection of our separation, right, of humans to nature. And I think your project uh, proposes a new relationship. Mm -hmm. there's, a new, there's a new vision for that relationship to be recovered, right? Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and of course there's the duality of doing that in the city and doing that in the outskirts of the country, but it's very consistent in the project. So it's basically what I call, uh, what you call, as a beautiful term, a new nature. Is it possible for us to invent a new nature? So <clears throat> that becomes very clear in your practice. My question to you, as a very plausible project, right, for us right now, uh, architects around the world to consider, right? is this new form of consciousness would require for the practice a kind of a new balance as well. So how you establish your balance? Because of course, from one side, you have the promise of the new nature. From the other side, we have urban capitalism mm -hmm. and growth, mm -hmm. right? How do you keep your balance in your practice? in your soul, in your thinking? How do you do that, Gustavo? Well, Eduardo, I, I think it's a, a wonderful question and maybe I don't have the, the skills to answer it to you because for sure it will uh, continue with me for a long time my, during my life because this is like the gold, <laughs> the gold question, right? Uh, but I read, I, I like a lot, uh, a Brazilian indigenous uh, thinker that calls uh, Ailton Krenak. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw one lecture from him maybe two months ago. And he said, Every, uh, you should uh, steply, gently into the ground. 
Mm -hmm. And we can go to uh, detailing of how the building rests into the ground, but we can go to a more broader view. How can we treat soil? How we establish a relationship with the soil? How we take care of the soil? I have another book that I think is amazing that from uh, an Indian thinker that called uh, Satish Kumar, his name, and the name of the book is Soil, Soul, and Society. So taking care of the soul, the soil is taking care of the soul. You start with yourself, then if you do it properly, you for sure can uh, uh, encourage uh, the society. Uh, this maybe it's an answer to a more um, private uh, perspective, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Going to the to the practice, I think maybe it's not so different. Uh, it starts from uh, uh, from this private uh, this individual perspective, and then go to to a more uh, broader view. Uh, but one thing that now, at least it, it's in our favor, that bigger players of the market understood that they need to change. And they need to do it in a smart way because they want to stay to their positions, right? So now they need to do something different. It's, it's related to the capitalism and everything, but... so. I, 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 I don't know exactly. I think I well, a little think, bit. Uh, yeah. Do you think it's the reason you won the competition for the advertising agency? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, because it was much more like a... In the beginning, they don't, didn't understand, right? Why, why you're creating new nature? You know? strange concept to, to an office building because you, you can say that you're going to increase the, the, the effectiveness of the work and everything. But uh, I, I thought we, that if we go to a concept, a more conceptual uh, idea would be much more interesting to uh, develop the project in, in the end. And I think they, they quite uh, like it. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We have time for a, a few questions. Um, I would like just to ask if, uh, if you could uh, turn your camera on and ask your question directly to Gustavo would be really great. Thank you. Well, I have another question. I, um, uh, has your perspective as an architect changed through the um, collaboration with the communities up north, yeah. Central Brazil and north of Brazil? Yeah. And how so? Like how, how did you go back to Sao Paulo and continue drawing, continue thinking about architecture? Mm -hmm. What are like the biggest changes for you? That's a super interesting question, Eduardo. Well, I, I think, for example, this big project that I showed before, uh, it's a consequence of, uh, of this, uh, or it's an attempt to bring uh, this other knowledge or this other uh, conceptual approach to, to, to a bigger city. And, and I think what actually changed is it's, it was me. Mm -hmm. right? So I was much more sensitive. I, I learned how to trust more into other knowledges. Uh, and I learned how to uh, uh, move away a little bit and just let, uh, leave them to discuss by themselves, then I enter again into the process. So I think it helps me to uh, 
develop social skills, <laughs> and, and then the, it was important. And 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 to don't have any preconceived ideas, and because as you know we we do have a strong school that says like you, you should be like this way or that way and that's it right? uh, and when you start to go into this community you try to you start to understand that they they have a lot of knowledge they know exactly how to build they they know how to do it well uh, but they but they don't have the skills to do a kind of refined design. So it's, it, it, I learned to listen more and talk less, be less an architect, to be more a human being. And I think this, for me, is that in the end, right? I'm a human being, then I'm a father, then I have, right? I'm a husband, then, then I'm an architect. So I need to fulfill all these things before and, and when I'm, so that's it. That's great. Any questions, anybody? Don't be shy, guys. Well, thank, thank you, uh, Gustavo, for a wonderful um, overview of your projects and approach. That's, that's very inspiring, and especially when you start mentioning the, the soil and the uh, philosophy and approach related to soil. I think that was very, very touching as well. And um, <clears throat> my sort of, uh, as a conversation piece, I guess, my thought in relation to your precision and geometry and repetition of structural rhythm uh, was, uh, my understanding is sort of kind of a giving a new kind of language to this, uh, the, the sites that you're working with as a kind of a, as a dialogue. Would that be a kind of a fair way to understand the kind of the precisional structure that uh, that you're uh, deploying in your structures in your buildings? Yeah, I, I, I think so. And and another thing to, to, that is important to uh, mention: uh, if I do one detail well, and I can repeat this mm. detail, <laughs> it helps me mm -hmm. because as everything is so so far away it's difficult so I, if i if i can do some one thing well and repeat as much as i can for me it's, it's super interesting then then later i i went to uh, enter to a different uh, relationship is how can i bring differenti differentiation into repetition hmm. right so th th this is uh, with doing something as equal, how different it could be. And, and another thing, I need to establish clear rules for me. So, uh, because it's easier to, 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 uh, to for, I don't have the ability to understand too much complex things in the beginning. So I need to establish clear rules. Then into these rules, I can push these, these boundaries away. But I need to understand exactly where is the border, right? So the border is like this. So I know that in the, to this border, I can operate almost in the edge of this border. But, but if I don't have the border, I, I, I don't know how to operate. So, so it's, a, it's a little bit like that. Thank you. Hi, Gustavo. Thank you so much for your presentation. Your work is really beautiful um, and your process too. And it sort of uh, speaks to what our studio and some of the work that I'm doing is trying to seek with working with Indigenous communities. Mm. And what it has taught me is that architecture is story. And if you kind of begin to think about it in that way, um, meaning comes from it and mm -hmm. you see it as a gift. Architecture is gift giving. And so it's really nice to see your practice and how you work with communities and how you engage and create those stories, especially how the architecture forms this really nice way of relationship building, especially with um, that contractor who you or the builder that you talked and you're working with models and you're having this really nice dialogue 
Um, yeah, so it's really nice. And so I was going to work with you with the Shoal Lake project. So um, I would love to talk sometime. It's very exciting work. Definitely, Sean. Hope, I hope it happens. Yeah, we'll have to make close future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you for your comment. Anybody else? Any other questions? I'm just trying the chat, the true references that uh, Gustavo gave it to us. So anybody wants to check? So if uh, we don't have any questions, uh, I'd like to thank you, Gustavo, very much for such a uh, inspiring and in, in kind of deep approach to possibly a new architecture. And uh, of course, being part of that tradition, you know, the tradition of Sao Paulo, um, it's really great to see um, some new ground being broken in that tradition. And I think um, it's very, um, is very kind of promising for, I hope, a new generation of architects in Brazil to kind of shift that attitude, right? kind of live in the heaviness of Brazilian modern tradition. And so it's such a nice, fresh breath for us to, to actually take in. So thank you very much, Gustavo. Thank, thank you, you everybody. And uh, you we, will, we will continue talking. Jade, would you like to, do you have any announcements or anything would you like to give? No? So thank you everybody um, very much and uh, have, a, have a nice evening. Bye-bye.